good afternoon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, Jackson County Clean Energy Plan final presentation. Uh, here is our team. Uh, George and myself are going to uh, have the presentation. Um, we would like also to thank uh, everyone who has uh, worked to, to bring this uh, plan to, the, to life, especially our faculty advisors at the University of Iowa, the Jackson County Clean uh, Energy District, and Jackson County Economic Alliance. Uh, thank you everyone for, for all your, your doing. Uh, we'll start with uh, our uh, summary for uh, presentation, for uh, outline presentation summary. That's going to um, have plan overview, existing solar installation, solar visibility study, Spring Grove uh, Clean Energy, pilot project and recommendation, and we will welcome questions at the end. Uh, our plan overview, um, we will start first of all, of course, the, the location uh, of uh, Jackson County at the eastern side of uh, Iowa State by the um, um, uh, Sibir River. Um, the population um, uh, starts like declining a little, a little bit uh, under uh, 20, uh, 20,000, and, um, and it's projected to decline a little bit um, till uh, uh, 2040. Um, our uh, vision and goals um, to retain energy money uh, in county, in, in, the, in the Jackson County, uh, uh, promote initiatives toward local energy production, attract new residents, and uh, and, and be an Iowa leader in clean energy production uh, for rural ca counties. Um, uh, among all the uh, renewable energy, we are going with solar, and, and, and why? Because, you know, that was our partner uh, interest, and also uh, we are trying to solve the rising energy cost as well of introducing um, solar. Um, uh, our ex uh, existing solar panel installation, I will hand it over to my colleague, Josh. All right, thank you. So uh, this is our first component of our plan. Uh, it maps the existing solar installations for Jackson County. Oh, this does work. It's very good. Um, so in our discussion with Springbrook residents, one uh, view that was shared with a lot of, uh, with us, was the, how they perceived the lack of visibility for solar panels led to concerns about uh, the technology being able to perform, to perform in the area. Um, so our team decided to help improve that, to help improve that visibility, we took uh, a map, oh, <laughs> we took a map um, from, various uh, sources uh, from solar panel installation companies to the solar issued county permits to have to determine uh, the, the geographic extent of existing solar panels within the county. Uh, we learned that in total there was about 67 installations that we were able to find and they're primarily residential in nature. Um, we also learned about the dates that they were installed uh, with our earliest records starting in 2014 with a uh, massive, very sharp increase in to 2021. Uh, in total, these uh, existing systems produce over 2.2 million kilowatt hours of electricity per year, uh, which is equivalent of offsetting uh, 977 metric tons of CO2 or the potential sequestration of 16,000 seedlings over 10 years. Um, the previous map, the previous map was, the previous map was created using ArcGIS, which is a software available through the University of Iowa, but is not universally accessible. Um, in order to create the framework that uh, would outlive our involvement, uh, our team turned to Google My Maps. This application allows the Jackson County Energy District to continue to update and use this map to provide and promote more solar visibility. Uh, as, any, as their efforts continue to solarize the county. Um, additionally, this uh, program doesn't have any subscription costs, so it's free to use. Um, 
and this map will be embedded and available to view on the Energy, Energy District's website um, within the next couple weeks. So our third section is our feasibility study for uh, solar installations on Jackson County owned buildings uh, to reduce the operational costs and to invest in uh, renewable energy. This study examined 13 uh, sites across Jackson County to determine the economic feasibility of installing solar panels on uh, these, these buildings. The study estimates the economic payback for these solar installations based on current energy consumption, uh, power generation, and uh, energy inflation in the future. So one of the largest sites it, uh, the team explored was the new Jackson County Jail, which will be built in the near future. Um, due to its similarity to the Delaware County Jail, we were able to use their utility information to determine the appropriate system size uh, because the jail would be connected to Makoka Municipal, uh, it would not be able to take advantage of the net metering <laughs> policies that are associated with Iowa, Iowa's investor-owned utilities. And in our conversations with solar installers, uh, we determined that the average monthly base load uh, for the county jail proves the most practical option for system size. Um, in total, our calculations estimated that the Jackson County Jail uh, installation would cost between $172,000 and $277,000. While that's quite a bit of money, the estimated avoided electricity cost uh, would be over $550,000, which over the 25-year lifespan of the solar panel system uh, would provide a return of over uh, between $280,000 and $385,000. And then that system, is expected to pay itself back um, between five and a half and 8.7 years. Our analysis also looked at systems that were uh, much smaller in size. This is one of the secondary rows maintenance shops that has the potential to install solar panels uh, on it as well. Uh, it would avoid about $20,000 uh, of, of electricity costs in its lifetime and cost anywhere between $7,300 and $10,300, paying itself back in 6.3 to 8.3 years. Um, because this uh, shop is within Energy Alliant Energy Territory, it can take advantage of those net metering policies, which is why we see the uh, system designed to be 100% of the monthly electrical use. So in total, uh, all 13 sites uh, could avoid an estimated $1.7 million in electricity costs while only costing between $670,000 and $944,000. In total, this system would pay itself back between, these systems would pay themselves back uh, in between 6.9 and 9.6 years. And I will turn it over to Wild to finish our presentation. Our, our uh, second main part of the plan is uh, Spring Grove Clean Energy uh, project, pilot project. Uh, the location is almost in the center uh, of the Jackson County and, uh, and uh, with areas 384 square, uh, square acres. Um, uh, Spring Grove uh, has 143 population and 65 um, households. Um, the median income is 66,875, 66, uh, and that is uh, more than the uh, above the average of the Jackson County and uh, the state of Iowa. Um, we started uh, our our plan for uh, Springbrook by visiting Springbrook, and uh, we had uh, the community engagement, and we visited the the resident. Uh, we did door to door uh, campaign trying to um, find out uh, the Springbrook residents' view about the uh, uh, renewable energy and solar energy in, in particular. And also we had a community survey um, uh, and uh, we received um, around, uh, we received 23 um, um, uh, surveys back. And, um, and uh, we find out that the majority of uh, the residents and uh, I mean who took the survey and also when we we're speaking to uh, residents uh, uh, when we visit their homes they, uh, they were 
the majority were trying to lower their energy bills, is a very uh, priority, and also diversify energy sources towards renewables. Uh, but uh, it's worth to mention that um, uh, the majority did not uh, cite climate change or resiliency to, uh, uh, as, a, as a motivator. Uh, maybe because there was no um, uh, serious uh, outages uh, recently or any uh, natural disasters. And also um, there is a, a really fun that there is good opportunities in Springbrook um, that is, um, um, it is, it is like uh, we have a, a strong uh, city leadership and uh, resonant support for solar projects and also the availability of land for uh, ground-mounted uh, uh, solar array, um, and also the high median house, house, household income. And uh, we've tried to um, explore uh, options for Spring Brook, and um, uh, there was some, uh, a part of the, um, uh, the distributed solar generation, uh, we've tried to explore the uh, community solar um, and, uh, but we being fed with, with some challenges and limitations uh, for the so, uh, community solar. And the major um, uh, limitation was the, uh, the virtual net metering that's not yet uh, allowed in Iowa State. And uh, also the financing solar, uh, solar fa facility and uh, also dependent on uh, aligned energy only. Uh, and, uh, and the relative profitability of their uh, party power purchase agreement um, uh, in comparison with uh, direct purchase. So um, um, we've tried to approach, since uh, uh, aligned are the uh, utility uh, uh, provider and um, we have, uh, they have a long-term franchise agreement with them, so we've tried to figure out what projects that they could afford uh, we found that there is, um, they have um, uh, a program called uh, Customer uh, Hosted uh, Solar uh, Program that's run by, by uh, Align themselves. So uh, we met with them last February uh, to approach them for that uh, program. And uh, there is application was passed to them for their uh, engineers to assess the infrastructure. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there, uh, we received application denial in uh, last April, and the reason that um, uh, this program just dealing with one entity or one business or, uh, or one customer and not multiple residents, and, uh, and also they gave the option, there was an option that they do only the uh, city buildings, but also that one has a different factor, I mean, I, I mean, the capacity of the system has to be about 200, uh, 200 at least the minimum 200 kilowatt. While the uh, the, the buildings and uh, that belong to the uh, Springbrook city is only 40 kilowatt, and um, and uh, for the uh, and they they have another program also called uh, the community uh, solar program, but also they have some factors to have that, that uh, program as well. Uh, the main factor is that they need a community really bigger than Springbrook, and they need also um, uh, the, um, uh, to set the uh, solar array uh, next to a uh, substation. And uh, beside that, that program is only done once every uh, other year in Iowa, and it's only one project, actually. So they, had, they, they could um, consider Springbrook, but that's not a guarantee that the project will go on there. But actually, they have, always they have new programs, and um, there, they, I mean, there is, there is opportunity to tailor kind of programs. Maybe we can just, um, discuss one uh, in the later. And, and uh, also, uh, one of the options that uh, we could have the municipality utility, uh, but uh, saying that um, uh, the city has uh, uh, a franchise agreement with Alliant and will make that option really complex and really uh, expensive to, uh, to be done. Uh, 
uh, I mean, to have the municipality, municipal utility. And uh, also, the uh, city of Springbrook can have their own system, a solar installation for the Springbrook uh, uh, buildings, the city buildings, uh, if they could, uh, I mean, fund the, uh, the uh, installation or try to find out a third party for purchase agreement. But talking to the uh, uh, solar inst installers, they also require uh, um, the minimum 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 uh, uh, size of the system should be 250 kilowatt on ground uh, mounted and 500 kilowatt for uh, uh, roof mounting uh, system. And um, but could have a different scenario. I mean, different negotiation with a third party or investor. Maybe they. They could make a, a small scale of um, uh, of a solar uh, installation, um, but that that's something that's really difficult to find actually. But because the majority of them, they require that uh, that type of scale of uh, system. Um, uh, that will take us to our recommendations for uh, Springbrook. Uh, we really encourage. Uh, um, encourage uh, to educate community of household uh, solar inst uh, installation, create incentives uh, to assist uh, front cost, because right now the incentives only, the federal incentives is about 26%, and Iowa State has no incentives, and it was uh, discontinued uh, uh, the, uh, last, uh, last year, 2021. And uh, also uh, install solar facility for the city service, um, that um, uh, could be also compared with uh, grant uh, and grant and uh, uh, for purchase agreement if there is any installer agreed to have system. Um, I mean, that, uh, at that scale, that's only 40 kilowatts. That's for, uh, I mean, I'm talking about only the building for the Springbrook city, uh, that belongs to the Spring, uh, city of Springbrook. Uh, and they can make use of the available grant, the federal grant, but that's not um, also something that's really guaranteed. And uh, for the long term, we think that uh, we have to continue to pursue uh, partnership with, uh, for centralized solar facilities with uh, aligned energy because they're always having kind of program. And uh, I think um, maybe, I mean, approaching them uh, time, time after time, they could tailor kind of a program or could have a program maybe um, have not only spring broke if there is problem uh, with the scale and uh, the community size they could maybe uh, have uh, Bellevue or uh, any other um, nearby city so that could be really feasible for them and a common uh, economical sound for them and uh, and also we uh, we um, personally uh, uh, we also encourage to Pursue potential battery system project if the uh, if the grid demand um, from solar installation increases. Uh, incorporate also incorporate clean energy objectives in franchise ag agreement. And um, our our uh, feasibility study recommendation for Jackson County uh, for the short term to continue to explore. Um, uh, BB solar system on county facilities and solicit estimates from local solar installers and the long term to invest in Jackson County feasibility, uh, facilities uh, outlined in the feasibility study and our feasibility study is showing that a good uh, return about 1.7 million and uh, also the uh, uh, payback period is also is, is quite reasonable, seven to 10 years, which is quite reasonable. Yeah, uh, the, thank you so much, and uh, this is what we have now, and thank you for coming and listening, and we are welcome your questions.